Automatic CSS has a brand new experimental feature in version 3.1 called Textures and Overlays. It's a very powerful and very useful feature, but you're gonna need to see it in action before you really understand it. So I wanna demo it for you and walk you through it right now. I'll share my screen, and as you can see, I have two hero sections. What I'm gonna do is define a custom texture style, and I can use that texture style as a background or as an overlay, and I'm gonna use it, and, and I said or, it's actually and. You can use it for both at the exact same time, which is unique and also very, very fantastic. So I'm gonna do a background in the first hero section. I'm gonna do an overlay in the second hero section, and we're gonna see how this all works and how it comes to life. And then you're gonna see, uh, I think, exactly how valuable this feature is. Okay, so first things first, how do you even turn this feature on? I'm gonna open ACSS. I'm gonna go to Options, Experimental Features, and turn on Textures and Overlays. I can then immediately go to Backgrounds and Text, and you're gonna see Textures and Overlays right here, ready for action. There are three that you can define. We're gonna expand this very soon, probably in the next week, to five. And I think that's gonna cover 99% of what most websites would need, uh, but there could be a pathway to adding more, obviously, in the future. Now, the first field you're gonna see is name, and the default name is one. Here's what you need to understand about naming. Naming is optional. So by default, texture one and overlay one will exist. Texture two, overlay two, if it's enabled, right? If it's enabled. And by the way, each one only exists if there's an asset. If there's no asset, no code is loaded for this feature whatsoever. So it's very lightweight to begin with, but it also is conditional. Like if there's no asset, there's no code loading at all. So that's nice as well. Um, but the first thing is the name. If you want to give it a custom name, you can. And then Automatic CSS will create the classes using those names for you. The default names of one, two, three, four, five, those will always exist and always work. But if you want to use the custom name, which can be easier for you to remember, you're free to use that as well. So what I'm gonna do is show you the asset that we're gonna be using for this background. So I'm gonna navigate to here and I'm gonna navigate to this background image. I got this from Unsplash, it was free. Um, it's just something I wanted to use for this tutorial. You can use any asset to, that you want. You can use a uh, opaque asset. You can use a transparent asset. You don't even need a media file. You can use uh, a, a compound linear gradient if you want to. We'll talk about that in just a second. But I'm gonna use this media file right here. And the best way to use media is to grab the relative URL to the media. Don't grab the entire URL because if you ever migrate your site, change domains, well, you don't want this stuff to break, right? So relative URLs is the way to go. And you're going to see texture asset and I can right click and I can paste in my relative URL to the asset. Now, here's the thing. If you are using a URL based media, you need to toggle this asset as URL because you're not forced to, it's not the only option, right? Like I said, you could use a non-media asset right here, like a compound linear gradient. And if you're doing that, then you're gonna turn off asset is a URL because it's obviously not a URL. This does the URL function wrapping for you so that you're free to just paste in a URL and move on with your life. Um, that's really what that switch is for. So I'm gonna right click and paste in here. And before I do anything else, we're just gonna save. We got our asset in. Um, I'm gonna name this glossy because that's kind of a description of what this asset is. This will allow us to see how the naming works as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save. So I have defined a custom texture style, but I haven't used it anywhere. That's why we're not seeing anything happen. But if I go use this, we will see it come to life. So I'm gonna click on this section right here and I am going to use it. Now, do I use, how do I use it? Texture one, or, and I'm doing the background in this section right here, or texture glossy. And remember, it uses BIM, so it's texture double dash. I'm gonna put in a one, and you're just gonna see it come to life, right? So there is our texture. Now, obviously, it doesn't look the way that we want it to, and that's okay because we can continue customizing it, and everything that we wanna do is doable from automatic CSS. The first thing is, I don't want it to be a repeating pattern, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to texture size, and instead of 200 pixels, I'm gonna change this to cover. And immediately it's starting to look really, really good, right? I can even control the texture position. I can do center top. I can do center bottom. I can do 
percentages, 50%, 20%. I can do whatever I wanna do here. I'm gonna leave it as center. And it's great that we get live preview while you're doing all of this, makes it even easier. You can choose the attachment. Scroll is the default. Fixed would be like a parallax effect, okay? Uh, I'm gonna leave it on scroll. And then perhaps one of the best features of all is that these custom textures map to automatic CSS color relationships. If you're familiar with color relationships, like when you're using BG Dark, BG Ultra Dark, BG Light, BG Ultra Light, where you can automatically flip the color of your headings, your text, your buttons instantly with these relationships, this ties into that. So I'm gonna tell this that this is an ultra dark section and it's gonna use my ultra dark relationship styles when I hit save, watch this. Like magic, my foreground is going to come to life. And that's completely controllable right here from dark relationships. My text color, my heading color, my link color, my button styles will all take shape based on these settings right here. All right, I'm gonna go back to textures and overlays. Now we're not done yet. I actually don't like that asset as is out of the box, right? What I want is to tone it down. How do I tone it down? I can tone it down by putting a color overlay or a gradient overlay on top of it. And so we have this feature called texture overlay. This is an overlay that is local to the texture. It's not using this as an overlay. We're gonna get to that in just a minute. It is an overlay gradient that is local to the texture. You'll see what I mean in, in a little bit, okay? But we define this using a linear gradient. And of course, you do not have to make it a visual gradient. If both values are the same, it's going to look like one solid overlay, okay? And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna say neutral ultra dark trans 70, and then comma neutral ultra dark trans 70. This is the neutral ultra dark at 70% uh, opacity, right? And look how I'm darkening that effect right out of the gate. And I can dial this into whatever I want. And again, these don't have to be the same. I could do 30 on top, 70 on the bottom, or vice versa. Whatever you want to do here, it's just your creativity is the only limit. I'm actually done defining this custom texture style, okay? So let's go ahead and refresh on the front end and see what we've got. So this is my custom texture that I can now go use anywhere I want. For example, if I come down here and I say texture one, it's going to get the exact same style. Now, you're wondering, does texture glossy also work? Texture glossy also works, yes, okay? So like I said, you can use either one. They both exist at the same time. They will both work at the exact same time. It's just based on personal preference, which one you wanna use. Now, let's take the same texture and use it as an overlay. Watch this, this is crazy, okay? So what I'm gonna do in this section down below is I'm actually gonna go to background and define a unique background image for this section. I'm gonna use this guy right here. I'm gonna insert that. We're gonna go full resolution, right? Um, by background position, let's go center, center. No, let's actually go custom and let's go 50% and 80%. How about 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20? Why are we, oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot there's two boxes now. There used to only be one box, uh, 20%. Uh, 30%, no, 10%, there we go. I just wanna kind of position him perfectly in that section there. Uh, and then what I wanna do is I want to save, and we'll just talk about this for a second. So over in automatic CSS, you're gonna see this setting that says enable overlay class. The minute I click on this, there is now a new class called overlay one and overlay glossy. Either one work, they both exist at the exact same time, just like with the texture classes, okay? And now I'm free to go use that on this section instead of my texture class, okay? And what we're gonna get here is an actual like overlay use case. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And we're gonna go here and we are gonna say overlay one, okay? And it is going to take that texture and apply it to this section, not as a background, but as an overlay over the current background that I've already put there, right? And now you're like, okay, well up here that looked good, but down here it's still, it's way too bright. Well, guess what? I still have additional overlay layer. Now, if I wanted to steal this overlay 
from right here. I could copy it and I could paste this in. It'll use the exact same one. But sometimes when you're using overlays like this, you actually want to you want it to behave a little bit differently, right? Like I want it maybe to be a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. Or maybe here is where I go 40 or 30 or 50 or whatever and really just dial this in a little bit differently from how I was using it up top. Not to mention I also have an opacity control. I can go 0.5 and now it's only half as strong, right? So you're seeing a much different effect here. I could go 0.3 and it's barely doing it, right? Which is for a glossy overlay, that's pretty cool. But I might want it to be a little bit stronger. I might wanna go like 0.6 or something like that. Now I'm gonna save and let's go look at these two sections on the front end and see what our effect is. I don't think I saved the builder. Let's save the builder and let's refresh. Look at this effect. This is. Just absolutely beautiful. Like brings a lot of interest to the design and layout that was not there before. Now, before we go, I'm gonna blow your mind one last thing. You can actually use the overlay classes on images. As long as your media is in like a figure tag or a picture tag or something like this, look at this watch. I want this watch to get our overlay effect, the same one we're using in the background. Of course, it could be a different one if you wanted to use a different one, but watch this. I'm just gonna go here. I'm gonna say overlay and let's just use the name glossy, right? Because I already used overlay one. I'm gonna say overlay glossy. Look at what I'm doing to these images, right? Overlay one. Either one works, right? Let's save, let's go back to the front end. Look at the visual interest now in that watch, tying it into the same effect that's going on in this entire section. And remember, I've only used one texture slot to do both of these things. I'm gonna have five texture slots available to me. The sky is the limit maximize your creativity, get to using this experimental feature. I wanna get it out of experimental uh, mode and into full-blown part of ACSS core as soon as possible. I need you to use it. I need you to let me know if any areas need improvement uh, or if there's any bugs and we will get this out of experimental ASAP. But if you've upgraded to 3.1, it is there for you right now. All right, have fun with it. I'd love your feedback. See you guys soon.